Hi everybody, it's Mo Bunnell, your host here at Real Relationships, Real Revenue. I'm author of The Snowball System, and I and my teams have trained over 15,000 experts all over the world on sound, efficient, authentic business development techniques. I'm joined for our third interview of Molly Fletcher. Molly is a gem. She's always got insights. She always has high energy. She was called the, the female Jerry Maguire in the sports agent world. She left that world and became a best-selling author and a sought after public speaker. And I always enjoy being around Molly. I always leave inspired and I always leave with an insight. And that's happened in the last two episodes. If you haven't checked those out, do it now. Uh, but in this episode, we're going to write to Molly's strength. She's one of the best relationship builders I've ever met, and I'm going to ask her what her best advice is to deepen relationships. So before we get into that, head over to growbigplaybook.com. That's where you can sign up to get our weekly newsletter delivered right to your inbox. You can usually read them in three to four minutes. I write them myself, and I always focus on giving you one idea you can use right away to elevate your business development skills. So that's at growbigplaybook.com. All right, here we go. Here's Molly Fletcher on Deepening Relationships. Hey, everybody. I am back again for our third interview with Molly Fletcher. Fletcher. My name is Mo Bunnell, your host here at Real Relationships, Real Revenue, and I've had an absolute blast in the last couple episodes getting Molly's wisdom in her head, and we're mashing up all of our content, and we just think so aligned, Molly. So it's yeah. so easy and fun and sure. so energetic, inspirational. So here's here's our question for this episode. We've already covered um, the big idea to, to sort of grow our book of business and relationships or sort of our career, the biggest idea. We talked about creating and closing opportunities in the last episode. And in this one, I want to go deep on relationships. So what's your best advice around not only deepening relationships, but maybe even how do you meet new people? How do you foster relationships? There's that early stage of a relationship of A, you've got to meet somebody and B, in the beginning, it's so darn fragile. Yeah. So in this episode, maybe we cover how do you meet the right new people? And then once we cover that, maybe we'll get to how do you handle those first couple weeks of a relationship where everybody's sort of testing each other out. Sure. Right, go. Yeah. So, I mean, how, how, do, how do you meet new folks? I mean, I think there's a, a lot of ways to do that, right? One of them, I think, is we over deliver to our current client list, right? Our current relationships to a point that they want to help us. They want other people to experience the love, right? That, that, that they're getting. And so they're happy to make those kind of introductions to us. And by the way, I think there's a really big difference between referrals and introductions. And, you know, I used to always find when I was an agent that if, if, that if I went to a player and I said, you know, Hey, you know, listen, if you ever hear about a player that, that isn't happy with their agent, you know, let me know. Nothing would happen. Nothing would happen. But if I said to him, Hey, listen, next week you guys are playing St. Louis and I know Marquis on that club and, and you know him and you went through the minors with him and you know, do you mind running over to the clubhouse and just kind of ask him if he's happy with his agent? Because I've heard that agency splitting up. Would you just ask him for me? It's really specific. I've invested so much in the relationship with Mark that he's more than happy to do it. In fact, he can't wait to do it because I've poured into him so much that he's eager, in fact, to, to go make that ask for me. But that level of specificity inside of those introductions is, 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 is really integral to getting the wins, getting those new relationships in play. Yeah, I really like it. And, and you're also very clear that it's a win for them too, right? Because you've over-delivered so much in that relationship like, and, and you skipped over something here, but I, but our audience might not catch it because it's so intuitive to you. I want to point this out. You've over-delivered so much that there's a clear win for the person making the introduction because they know if they introduce Molly Fletcher to this other person, that, 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 you, that they're going to get a win whether they hire you or not, right? Because they've learned that you over-deliver in the courting process and the business development process, not just in the hiring process. Sure. So I, would, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if you said... I'd be, you know, a couple sentences in there. Um, I'd be willing to help him in any way I could, whether I'm hired or not, you know, something like that. I would right. That's a great that. call. You saying. For yeah. sure. And you're right. You're yeah. making a good point that the, that the person making the referral feels really safe to do it, right? They know that they're yeah. potentially making an introduction to somebody that's going to represent them well, that's, that's authentic and that cares and that's going to do the right thing because they've done it for them. So to me, to me, that's huge. And, and to your other part of the question, right, as it relates to, how do you, how do you, how do you, how do you build new relationships? It makes me think of a, a kind of a funny, fun story. So I remember 
so John Smoltz was a client of mine um, for a long time. And, and, you know, there was a point in which the Braves had lots of young guys that all came up in, in, into the big leagues at the same time. There was four or five kind of young guys, all studs that all came up together. Well, I wanted to sign all five of them, you know what I mean? Which would be difficult to do, but so I orchestrated this thing to have our TV department do an interview where John would interview all these rookies and the rookies had a chance to interview John. And I literally kind of created this, this sort of show, but it was an excuse really to get all these five rookies up to the office to, to spend time with them, to connect with them. Well, you know, young guys are just getting to the big leagues. They're they're If Smoltzy says, hey, dude, we're doing this interview, be there at two, they're there with bells on, right? So I think sometimes when we think about building new relationships, we've got to also be creative about how we do that. We can lean into our existing relationships to do that. But any way in which we can create opportunities that benefit both parties, and John was happy to do it because I had poured into the relationship. The rookies are happy to do it because they get to spend time with a veteran. But now I've got five prospects in one place for a couple hours that I can get curious with identify the gaps in their lives and then act like I have the business before I have the business, right? Behave in a way that sends them a message. Hey, you matter to me. And by the way, look, right. We're the real deal. We've got all this. So those little things, you know, can be powerful things. We think about building new, new relationships. Well, I love that. And you know, you know this cause you've had folks at your company go through our course and all that, but we've decoded 15 different ways that we call lead generation, 15 ways to, to introduce more people. And they're all in, everybody knows this, uh, their audience, but it's all in the book, the snowball system too. But the commonality on the 15 ways, Molly, just hits at a, 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 a nugget of what you just said. And I want to call it out and get your feedback on it. The commonality across all 15 methods is they lead with value. Yeah. So no matter which of the 15, you've got something awesome and you offer that to someone to potentially directly or potentially through in your, in your model with John Schmaltz, where he could take that gift, that gift of value, the interview, and take it to other people. And all the models start with value. So I think the old way of doing things is, and I'll make a joke out of this. I hope you think it's funny that the old way, and this happened to me in the 1990s, was with a life, there was some life insurance agent. And he slides a piece of paper across the table. We were in person and it's actually pre-made. It's ridiculously cheesy. It's got the numbers one, two, three, four, five with a line underneath it. And he says, you know, I make my business on referrals and I'd really appreciate if you could fill out this little card <laughs> with five, five names of people that I can call on. So I'm how I receive that message is, Mo, this is really weird. I've got this really awkward card and I'm pushing you to do it. And I'd like you to write down five people. And how I hear it is, I'm going to harass the hell out of them and right. embarrass you and, and stain your name by doing so. Can you fill this out? I, I actually did in the, Molly, in the moment, Molly. But as soon as he left, I felt like I needed to go take a shower. And I called up every one of the five people and said, hey, this guy might call you, but I, you know, this is what happened. I feel awful about it. So anyway, back to you is I, I just know how you work. And I know every time you add so much darn value to your current and your future clients that I would that I would guess that what was in the back of your mind when you told that story about the interview is you're thinking, how can I add value? Everybody wins. I gain access and I'm going to be yeah. able to help more people. But yeah. it all starts with a, with a piece of value. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's so important. I mean, even now in my world now, I speak 80 days a year ish, 100 and on performance primarily. And, and then also with our training, we train on, on negotiation and certainly on, on sort of energy management all around performance. But, but you know, when I think about speaking, I, I often hear from the speaker bureaus that book us, you know, what can we do to be really easy to work with? And, and there's things that, that are really important to me to do. I do a pre-call before every keynote so that I can get in the head and the heart of the audience. And they tell me lots of people won't do that. And then I listen, we customize every single keynote because I think if, if, if you're going to stand in front of the most important people in their world, whether it's their customers or their employees, you need to know what matters to them. You need to know what they're worried about, what they're excited about. So before I even step on the stage or now with video, I've poured into that relationship a lot. So after, if there's anything that we need or we want to offer them or support them, anyway, th those follow-ups are, 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 they're happy to do it, right? If, if there's anything needed, which there usually candidly isn't, but but we want to over deliver on the front end. We want to over deliver early 
And we certainly want to over deliver before we ever ask for anything, right? Like that guy that slid that piece of paper across the table. I mean, are you kidding? Right? Like to me, that would have been, Hey, listen, Mo, I'm super excited to have the opportunity to work with you. And, and, and by the way, you know, if, if we over deliver for you and if you're happy with what we do, would you be comfortable maybe at some point me reopening a conversation with you about if there's people that you think we could also help, but only if it's something that, you know, I mean, that's what that looks like. Right. And yeah. I mean, I saw it all the time, Mo. I would sit, you know, we didn't manage money with our athletes and I would see all the time advisors come up and pitch my clients. And and it was hilarious because I'd see, I sort of watched the ones that would get the business and the ones that wouldn't. And I began to see- Ooh, This is interesting, yeah. I, I, I began to see a pretty clear pattern, right? And, and the truth is the people that won are the people that that I'm sure you're working with, right? Or the kind of people that you teach and the methodology that you teach. But I would, I would have, I remember one day I had an advisor came in to pitch Jason Hayward, who was a first round draft pick, young kid out of Atlanta. And this first guy comes in and he sits down and he, he's kind of a little anxious, but he opens up this portfolio. This re, I mean, it was a really impressive deck, right? Like incredible images, headshots, photos, like stats, whatever. And I watched Jason kind of look at me like, who's this guy, right? Like, who is this cat? What's the deal? And he just starts pitching him. And then another lady comes in, kind of does the same thing, pops open her laptop, kind of rolls into the pitch, the script, right? And then there was this other lady that walks in a couple minutes later and she like, she was like the third one. And she said, Hey, Jason, what a treat to be with you. She knew two or three things about Jason's world that blew him away that he knew. Like she said some things that he thought, candidly, he thought, dude, you're a chick and you know this, like, wow, I didn't know. That's cool. And then, wow, like, you know, that, that, you know, and she said, I can't remember the two or three things, but they were things that blew him away that she knew about the game, about his world, about baseball. And they chatted for a minute. And then she said, hey, Jason, before we dig in, right, like, tell me about money. Like, what does it mean to you? And how do you want it to, what role do you want it to play in your life? Jason talked for 20 straight minutes. Like, never, never stop. Now she could be what I call an authentic chameleon, right? Like, she could take everything that she heard, be totally authentic to who she is and what she does, but deliver the kind of information that then she heard mattered most to Jason, right? So, it, it, to me, it, we have to have the courage too, at some level, when we think about this, to get off script, right? It feels safe, doesn't it, Mo? Like a lot of people want to stay on script. They want to open that portfolio. They want to pop open that laptop and go through their script because it's what they know. But man, when we ask questions, we get curious. And every salesperson, everybody in business development, right? That, that's beaten over their heads. They know that. But what I found is they don't always do it. And it's a game changer. Well, and one of our mantras is you play how you practice fits right into all your sports stuff. And if you, if somebody's sitting there practicing how they're going to go through their 42 page PowerPoint deck, they're likely to do that in the meeting. They practiced it. They're going to play like that. If we prepare, if we practice asking great questions, if we practice thinking through how can I create engagement, if we practice, how can we get them talking? Now we're going to play like that. And your story is so powerful. It's so cool. You got to actually you were being trained in a way of what works and what doesn't as you For did sure. this. It's such a, such a cool story. So, all right. So this has been a super cool episode. People are going to want more Molly. Where should they go? <laughs> so they can go to training.mollyfletcher.com for more information. Um, and, 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 and in that they can, they can type in a code game changer. That's all caps game changer. And they can get a little discount because they're Mo, they're Mo people. Um, I love it. Yeah, so they can check that out. If, if that can help them, that's awesome. Good. Training.mollyfletcher.com. The, the discount code is Game Changer. Everybody go out and check it out. And uh, Molly, thanks for being on the show. And everybody, hey, our next episode, I'm going to ask Molly, how can we hack our own habits to stay consistent?